Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. Here I have a great article for you guys from Seeking Alpha. I'll leave a link to it in the description so you guys can check it out. T-Mobile US clean capital return policy that is very attractive. So I wanted to cover the key points here in the summary and I'll leave the rest linked in the description, like I said, so you guys can check it out. So T-Mobile boasts an attractive capital return policy with a sustained decline in capital expenditure. Now, in my opinion, that's a bit of a problem. So they're lowering capital expenditure to post higher um, revenues so they can focus on shareholder uh, buybacks. You know, that's important too, but you still have to keep up with the network because that's also important, especially as T-Mobile continues growing the way they are. T-Mobile exhibits solid growth drivers, including strong postpaid and fixed wireless subscriber momentum. So they're continuing to do that. That is a big part of the company, and it's really what the stock is judged on. There will never be a quarter, right, as it stands at this time, that is going to hit the stock harder than when they lose subscribers. If they ever have, like, a super low quarter in growth or even losses, that stock is going to get, I mean, it's going to be a bad day for the stock if that happens. The company's ability to capture market share while maintaining a lower churn rate than competitors indicates its market strength. So they are very strong in, in that department and they continue to get better at it. So that tells you that the customer service, the pricing and value and the network are just getting better. And I know on an individual basis, some of you have had terrible experiences, just like with any company, everyone at some point has had bad experiences with customer service. But overall, nationally, you know, you're talking 115 million customers. It looks like it's relatively, you know, getting better across the board for, for all three categories. Better network, the pricing value seems to be what the customers uh, are okay with, and then customer service seems to be getting better. So like I said, I'll leave, I'll leave a link to this uh, in the description down below so you guys can check it out. There's lots of good info in there for you guys to check out but i just wanted to cover these three points the capital expenditure i think that's a bit of a negative in my opinion to kind of they're lowering that down to nine to ten billion to to uh please shareholders you know i think they should have left it at the 12 13 or 11 that they were spending very early on through through the merger that that, that would have been fine in my opinion but you know they decided to lower capex so they can post better numbers on the balance sheet and then they continue to exhibit exhibit solid growth including strong postpaid and fixed wireless access i don't see that changing at all i see that being a continued uh growth strength for the company and i see the other segments like business enterprise government agencies i see that continuing to grow as well and then they have you know like i like i've been telling you guys they have a very easy time gaining market share even in these small market rural areas, they grow very quickly. They add retail, network, local marketing, and they, they go from 0 to 5%, 10%, you know, fairly quickly. It doesn't happen overnight, but they get there in a very short period. It doesn't take long. So those, those are some of the strengths of the company moving forward. Uh, the financials will have to get better. The, they will have to drive up higher revenues. Um, probably... Some are going to want to see an ex accelerated buyback program. So that means T-Mobile will have to accelerate free cash flow even further to make those uh, buybacks happen. They have to get the next round of buybacks approved from the board. So they're working on that. The recent one that they got approved, they're, they're just about done with that one, with the buybacks. So in the future, they'll have to approve more buybacks. They want to do $60 billion in total buyback. That's a lot. But, you know, with, the, with all the money that they're making... And continue growing that 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 financial income, they'll get there no problem. So make sure you guys stay tuned for more. Like, share, subscribe, follow my social media outlets. I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.